pipe. So, copy it down. So Shakespeare presents Lord Capulet as a, what did you say? A uh, controlling and protective power. Why? Because uh, he, want, he wants to choose uh, what uh, Juliet does when she marries him. Okay, um, but why do you think Shakespeare wants to present him that way? Um, to show uh, that Juliet is on a different character and goes against the opposite patriarchal. Okay, so it was a, a, almost like a challenging. Challenging the patriarchal. Okay, so Shakespeare presents the Lord Capulet as a controlling objective father as a. Um, patriarchal norms. So how does he characterise Lord Capulet in this first instance? So think about where he says, my child is yet a stranger in the world. Okay, so um, Lord Capulet is first presented. He refers to Juliet as which quotation? A stranger. Which suggests what does it suggest? Are they, are they the same points, innocent and immature? Okay, so which suggests Lord's Capulet um, views Juliet as innocent. So you said innocent and immature, but if someone's innocent, does that mean that they're immature all the time, or does it? Are they two different ideas? They're two different. Yeah. Okay. So just try not to like bung it all together, separate them, because then you can develop the alternative interpretations as well with that. Okay. So it suggests Lord Capulet views Juliet as innocent, um, as she is. Inexperienced. In, um, in what? So, obviously in the world, but in terms of... I'm thinking about in terms of the, like her youth and, like a, not a mature world, but what am I trying to say, like in a... Experience for what a woman is expected to do at the time. Okay. Mm. Mm. Of a woman's role. Of a woman's role.
um, do you want to look at the alternative interpretation of this? Like, do you want to furthermore, or do you want to link that to the idea of her being inexperienced with something else? With another quotation, you could link that to something else as well, couldn't you? Which one do you want to go for? Uh, link it to right to be inferred. Okay. Um, so, furthermore, although I was telling you not to do that, don't, I? don't do furthermore, and then jump onto a different quote. Okay. This is the first one. This one. Furthermore, will you stop it? Um. Okay, so it refers. Okay, so furthermore, this is reinforced when he refers to her as being, or not being ripe. Mm. As not being yet ripe. Um, implying what? What did we say about, in terms of her being ripe and that objectification of her, of her body and her... What did we say about the reference to her body and being ripe? Not mature enough to birth a child. Okay, yeah. So furthermore, this is reinforced when he refers to her as being not yet ripe, implying And how can you link that to context? Um, the female genitive function for women was to just have children. Okay, lovely. So implying she, implying her body is not mature enough to birth a child, um, which is viewed. I'm loving how you were copying this down. Uh, I'll see you copy it down, Bailey. Is that it? I think, yeah. Married, hang on. As the only role of a married woman in the Elizabethan era. Oh no, hang on. I just scribbled that out, but it is. It's of her, of her sort of social status within the Elizabethan era. Okay. Okay, start thinking about what the next point is then. Can we, can we think of alternative interpretations of ripe? So we've looked at this idea of him being protective and not wanting, you know, to... Hang on. We're just starting to. Implying her body is not mature enough to birth a child, which was viewed as the only role of a married woman in, I don't know, of her social status in the Elizabethan era. Um, alternatively, right... So think about, we've talked about her not being ripe physically. Um. Is it also that it's the same? Okay, so almost we see like a different side of, um, of Capula. In the, before we go on, hang on, I'm just trying to think. Hang on, I'm going to write that down. We'll come back to that bit. Because at the moment we're still focusing on this idea of, remember our point is this idea of him being a protective father. So here we're seeing that protective side. Let's look at that first and then we can start to explore the idea of him maybe not being such a protective father and the references that he makes to her. So just scruffy writing. 
Okay, alternatively, so think about, look at your annotations, what were some of the other things that we said about, her, about this reference to fruit? Remember, if you think about it as being like a metaphor, so she is, a, like she is the fruit of his tree, isn't she? So yeah. she's not yet ripe enough, meaning what? She doesn't want to let her go. Okay, lovely. So alternatively, um, well, actually, it's not really, it's still making the same point. So um, I'll just show a little. So much used as a warning to Paris to show that she's still sort of protected. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did down earlier. Yeah. 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 Yeah.